Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. Today will be in Psalm 71 verses 2 through 7. Let's go ahead and pray and we can begin. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for another day, God. Thank you for getting us through it, Lord God. Thank you for getting us to it, God. You are God alone. Beside you, there is no other. We can't breathe without you, God. We can't live without you, God. You sustain us even in the smallest ways. While we are yet sinners, you died for us. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We know we can come to you for anything and all things. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to go ahead and begin. We are in Psalm 71. And it's believed that Psalm 71 is written by King David in his old age around the time of Absalom's rebellion. So let's go ahead and begin. So verse two, in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. So it says in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. So he's asking God not to deliver him out of what he's done for God, right? He's asking God to deliver him out of his own righteousness because he's a good God. And he knows the character of God at this point in his life. He knows that God is is in his essence, in his righteousness. He is goodness. He is truth. He is love. He is from whence all good things flow. It says, in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. So he wants God, him to not only deliver him from whatever situation that he's in, he also wants God to come in and rescue him. It says, incline your ear to me and save me. So bow down thy ear, O Lord, right? Turn towards me, hear my prayer and save me. I know that in this season, it just seems like prayers, for the most part, when you go to God, it's just such a quick turnaround lately because I know it's because it's the end times and and the things that you ask in, in, you know, with the right heart, you can get them very quickly, right? And it says, incline your ears, turn to your ear to me and save me, right? He knows of God's salvation. He God has saved him a plenty of times before, right? He has a testimony. He can remember back um, of God's righteousness in his life, how God saved him from the time he was a child to Goliath to all of the men he had to kill to get the Saul's daughter and and all the things he's gone through right and it says in righteousness in your righteousness not not David's right David had sinned and David had asked for forgiveness and God had had already forgiven him and he was living in his old age but he was saying out of not out of my righteousness right out of your righteousness deliver me and rescue me and Incline your ear to me and save me. Verse three, be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me for you are my rock and my fortress. Hallelujah. So it says, be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. He's acknowledging that it's his his needs are not once, right? His needs are not, you know, for today. You know, we go through things on a day by day basis and we need a refuge that is strong. We need a God who can be there for us every day time we come a God who's consistent a God who is righteous and who will deliver and rescue us right he says be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually because I need someone that's going to be there not just through this circumstance a God who I can call on that that will deliver me from this and then the next thing and then the next thing is always going to be there for me right be to me a rock of refuge. Would we've talked about this point of refuge, right? A, a place that you can run into and be safe, 
right? A, a place where you can hide away from the storms of this world, a place where man can't come right? A, a quiet place, a place when the storms are raging, you know, you can really truly go into, I was listening to um, Pastor Tony Evans, I think it's, it's yeah, Tony Evans um, of the Urban Alternative. And he was saying, you know, it's like fish when they're in the ocean, right? They don't fear storms because storms are only going to go so far deep into the water. I want to say he said like 26 meters or something like that. So he was saying how when the storm is raging on top of the waters, then um, the fish are just going to go a little bit deeper, right? They're just going to go a little bit farther, a little bit deeper into the water, right? That's how we should be when when we are facing the storms of life. We just need to go a little bit deeper in him. We just need to go to the rock of refuge to which we may continually come. You have given the command to save me for you are my rock and my fortress. It says you have given the command to say that means that he already knows that God is on his side. He already knows that he is special to the Lord. He already has a sense of of history with him, right? He says you have given the command to save me for you are my rock and my fortress. Meaning not only are you this safe and hard place, but you are the the place where that is my source. Right. I can go to you and get what I need. And also can I can hide in you. Right. A fortress can we talked about can contain weaponry. A fortress can contain treasure. A fortress can can contain a, a king. Right. So we he's God is not only a rock, a hard thing that that is impenetrable. This is a spiritual rock. Right. Uh, that impenetrable um, rock. But he's also who we can run into. And it's just so ironic because, you know, we were talking about um, returning to the rock from whence you were hewn. Right. We were just talking about that. I want to say it was in Isaiah that we were looking at that. But the rock, right, it says, you have given the command to save me for you are my rock and my fortress. So if he's running back to the rock, he says, um, to be to me a, a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. It was saying return back, right? Return back to that rock. Return back to the rock from whence you were cut out from. You were hewn. And, and the only way for you to be able to do that is to go back to God, go back to the hiding place, go back to the place from where you were hewn. So it says, you have given the command to save me for you are my rock and my fortress. That's our hiding place from this world. When people come at us, when situations come at us that seem that are impossible to be faced, right? That's when you are going to your fortress, going to the rock, the one who no one can defeat. Amen. All right. So verse four, and you, you have to remember, David is a king, right? David is a king. He's not just any old man. He is going to the king of kings. So how much more so should you go to the king of kings, right? You're not a king. You're not on top. You don't have a whole bunch of backup. You know, we need to go to the king of kings. If the king is running to the king, then you need to go to the king too. Amen. It says, verse four, rescue me. Oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man rescue me oh my god from the hand of the wicked so he's saying god come in and help now right what is that like i want to say um hosanna when you would um saying help now basically i think that's the meaning of hosanna like come now rescue me oh my god from the hand of the wicked so you know that the enemies um the weapon may form right but it doesn't mean that it's going to prosper, right? Not against the righteous. It says, rescue me, oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man, the unjust, the man that is, is without justice, 
right? And and the cruel man, wow. It says they have him in his their grasp, right? He he this is the need for a buckler, right? Not just a, a shield, but the buckler, the the hand-to-hand -hand combat shield, the the one that protects you up close. God is your buckler. It says, rescue me, oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. Even when the enemy may have you in his clutches, that's not the end. That's not the end. You still have the king of kings who you can call upon. Hosanna in the highest, right? Hosanna, come rescue me, oh my God from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. Verse five, for you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. So here he is acknowledging that God is his hope. Who else could be his hope? He's a king, right? You, who can you run to when you're the king? Your trusted advisor? Nope not David. David couldn't go to his trust. Some of his trusted advisors were the ones who were conspiring against him. So he had to be careful with whoever he was around, right? It says, for you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. He says, from his youth, he remembers when when he was out there shepherding alone and being confronted by wild beasts and, and having to save the sheep, right? It, he said that that was, God was his hope and his trust from his youth, right? He says, for you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, for my youth. That's, you, and you know, God brought David from a mighty long way and and it started when he was a child it started when he put his hope in god even as a child god favored him right because his heart was towards god his hope was in god his trust was in god when he was out there alone confronting wild beasts you know um you can you can give up the sheep right most people i'm sure his brothers when they were assigned to that same task would just give up the sheep if something came after it you know hey i'm not willing to die almost like the hired shepherd right but but david was different he was putting his hope in the lord he was putting his trust in the lord and he wasn't allowing anything to come against the herd Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being a good shepherd, for not just giving us up, right? Verse six, upon you, I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Upon you, I have leaned from before my birth. Wow. He acknowledges that God knew him before he knew himself. God took care of him before he ever came to be. He's giving God glory. He's giving God the credit for who he is, who he was, who he has become, and who he always has been, right? God is infinite, and he deserves the glory. He deserves the acknowledgement from before my birth. Hmm. You, upon you I have leaned from before my birth you are he who took me from my mother's womb when when it says took me from my mother's womb this doesn't mean like take out birth out or anything taken means here like um you took me from childhood to adulthood you took me from death to life so it says here you are he who took me from my mother's womb God has been taking care of him before he was in his mother's womb right it says he leaned on him before birth so we know that it, this is before so it says you are he who took me from my mother's womb god took control of his life god took his hand god saw his heart from way before he ever faced a trouble right it says my praise is continually of you david had a heart of praise do you want the favor of god do you want god's love to shower on you do you want to experience the fullness of god put your praise on him
Put your thanksgiving on him. Put your acknowledgement on him. Put, put, bring back to your remembrance how he saved you, how he brought you out, how he might have brought your family out, right? Bring it back to your remembrance. It says, my praise is continually of you. Verse seven, I have been as portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. I have been as portent to many. So this word portent means like almost like a bad omen, right? And and there are other definitions of this that could mean like I have been as important, right? But portent has been like also a, a, a almost like saying as a bad omen from from some people or a bad sign or monstrous right somehow in his old age maybe he he is not the same as what he used to be so it says i have been as important to many but you are my strong refuge right you are the person i can run to even when everyone else is looking at me as if you are just a drag you are not valuable anymore you are not who you used to be or you know oh look at what's what's going on in their life that must be a sign that god is not with them anymore no it says you are my strong refuge god is not like man he does not turn his back on us like man turns his back. He does not give up on us like man gives up. He is God alone. Besides him, there is no other. If there was ever one to put your trust in, if there was ever one who would not betray you, if there was ever one who would love you all the way to the end and beyond, it is him. He deserves our love and affection. He deserves every good and, and high praise. He is forever faithful. You know, for some reason, I'm just thinking on being in middle school and you know how just people friends and people who call themselves your friends and you know you lose some you gain some and everybody kind of goes their separate ways and does their own thing god is that friend that sticks closer than a brother when no one wants to sit next to you on the bus in the sixth grade god is there when no one wants to stand next to you or pick you for the team, God is there. When you grow up and you get the job and 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 no one wants to really train you and you have to do it on your own, God is there, right? God is there. He is a refuge in the time of trouble. He is a refuge in the storm. He is a fortress right? A place of protection that we can run to. Amen. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for letting us be able to run in you. You are our hiding place. You are our strong tower. The righteous can run in and they are saved. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. There is nobody like you. There is no God beside you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. The whole earth is full of your glory, Lord. Help us to acknowledge you the way you deserve to be acknowledged. Because you have brought us from a mighty long way from before our mother's womb. We leaned on you. We trusted in you. You basked in us and, and looked at us and watched us even before we were born. You knew how you wanted to make our nose and our mouth. Lord God, you knew how the sound of our voice would be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for caring for us and putting your love on us. Thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
If anyone out there would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than saying the words, believe them with all your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and you rose again on the third day. And I am saved. Lord God, forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins. I have many, Lord. Cover them with your blood. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer and believed that prayer and said it out loud, confess with your mouth, then you are saved and no one can change that. The Holy Spirit comes into you when you say those words and you believe those words and he seals you into the day of redemption. This is a free gift. In the day of redemption, Jesus will break the seal and take his church home. But the Holy Spirit is in you right now and he's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. He promises never to leave you. So he's going to show you the way. He knows your future. He knows the future that God wants for you. He knows the the plans that God has for you. And so he can he can tell you which way to turn, which job to take, which person to marry, how to live, right? But the only way that you can truly and honestly get to fully understand uh, his voice and know his voice is by spending time listening to him, spending time with him, right? Um, um, going in and reading his word. Sometimes it's a quick work, you know, sometimes people just have an instinct to know what the voice of God sounds like. But when you chase in that spirit, when you put it away and you, you don't fully, you know, listen, it can become harder and harder to hear his voice. So we are praying that that doesn't happen. And we pray that, you know, the voice of the Lord is strong in your life. So go out, allow the Holy Spirit to tell you which church home to join, you know, tell you what what place that you should be a part of, what believers you should be around to be sharpened in the word. And yeah, just put your trust in the Lord. Go out and be baptized in Jesus' name. These are things that the Lord commanded us to go ahead and do um, because he wanted us to. He, he knew that it was important to openly declare um, our salvation and not be ashamed of it. So this is all for tonight. I hope you all are doing well. I pray that God is with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.